So I'm down at Al Zor Golf Club today and I'm going to take you through the next three holes and talk to you all about the short game. We're going to be looking at 100 yards in and some little tips and tricks that you can do out on the golf course that don't require loads of technically a change in your golf swing, just how you're going to play different scenarios that we find ourselves when we're out there. Let's get stuck into it. I'm on the par three, second hole. I'm going to clip this one away, then we'll get down near the green and see what we need to do when we get inside that 100 yards. Just over the back of the green that one's gone, so we're going to find ourselves with a little bit of a chip here. So I've just pitched onto the green here and I've ended up running a little bit through and it's only a couple of yards off and I would imagine now that there's a lot of people who will watch this video and when they get by the side of the greens or the inside that 100 yard uh, marker, a lot of fear starts to happen, worrying about what to do. Oh, I always duff my wedges or I always duff those chips and these are the ones that we get scared about. now. I'm literally only two paces and I'm back on the green. I've obviously got the water there in the distance. It might be that there could be a bunker in this scenario or you're going down a slope or just back towards the fairway. But a lot of people get nervous and get you know, rushed um, as they get over this shot. And what the, the first sort of tip of the video would be and first thing I want you to take away is we need commitment. You're gonna get that through more practice when you're out on the golf course. But what I would see from this sort of shot would be looking at the trouble beyond the flag, thinking, oh, don't thin it into the water, don't duff it. And what I would see from a lot of players, they might have a good setup and look pretty well, but then we get that sort of shot where I've totally quit on it and I've not accelerated through impact and let the ball just float out. Now, when I just drop another one here, when we get into this scenario where we're close by, the first thing that we've got to understand is that, yes, we've got only a little bit of green and you might have one even if I just drop the, the ball here, if I said that my flag was going to be there. What we've got to do to play these close by chips and ones that are in a little bit of rough, we need a lot of loft. So 60 degrees, my most lofted wedge. And the reason for that is that as I would hit this shot, what's going to happen to the ball is that it's going to go more upwards instead of forwards. I'd watch a lot of players maybe take a little too, um, too less a loft, i.e. a pitching wedge, maybe a gap wedge here and then think as they're over it, oh, that's going to go too far, and that's where that quitting comes from. Now, once I've got this lofted club here, if I add in some speed, all that happens is it shoots up a little bit higher, lands a little bit softer, and only run out towards that ball. So even now, if I'm playing to this golf ball instead of the flag, what I've got to do in this scenario, if I just nudge that down into the rough a little bit more there, I've selected the loft to get it up in the air. What I now need to do is make sure that I get the weight a little bit further forwards, but I've really got to commit to a little bit of speed here. Notice as I'm going through, I'm just grazing that turf, but how quickly, it's nearly a half shot and I'm only three or four paces out there. So we've got to really commit. And like I said a second ago, this is gonna come from loads of practice around the chipping green, wherever it may be. But as we get in, I'm gonna pick a spot sort of halfway. And as I go through a bit of speed, just grabbed the golf club there, that rough, and expect that to happen as well because it is thick rough. But notice how it just popped out. And what I want to do there is see that I've got now maybe 10 feet coming back, 15 feet from a par. I don't want to duff it into the uh, ground in front of me. So let's just give that one more little go. And all I'm trying to think about is keeping that speed and keeping that commitment up. As soon as you quit on it, that golf club is going to get dragged into the rough and that's where we get those duff shots from. So when you're green side and you've got a tight pin, loads of loft and loads of commitment, weight forwards. And even there, that's better. It just pops out and just notice the speed that I went through that shot with. It wasn't a little ooh, nervy one like we saw from the earlier shot. I kept the speed up and I've managed to get that out. So make sure you've got loft, loft is your friend, and stay committed when we've got a green side chip that's in a little bit of rough. Safely away. 
So I've got to the fairway now where I found my golf ball and we're only 70 yards up to this flag here. And one of the problems that I would see from a lot of people here, again, is that lack of commitment, but then also like club selection. I see a lot of amateurs when I play golf with them. They're that nervous of hitting the half shot, making a smaller golf swing that they get the most lofted club and try and smash the living hell out of it. So the tempo speeds up, the sinking of the golf swing is all over the show. And also, if we did go for our most lofted club and we make a good connection, I think a lot of people underestimate A, how far it goes, and B, the spin that could be imparted on it. Because if I went for my 60 now, and we look just up to the flag here, I've got a bit of ground to cover here. I've got some swales, so I've got to land it perfectly up towards the flag. If I did that, it would then be loaded with more speed, with more spin because I've added more speed to my swing. So I pitch it up and then all of a sudden it's maybe spinning back off and it's not gonna release forward as much. When I see a lot of players, they would hit an okay wedge and it sort of stops very quickly and they get, oh, oh I thought that was gonna bounce on like my seven iron and you end up leaving it 20, 30, 40 feet short. So what I would suggest doing a little bit more is going maybe to your middle wedge for me, my 56 degree, and we want to hit a bit more of a controlled shot here. So the flight's going to be a little bit flatter. There'll be a little bit more run out on it as it goes in. And I, I can almost manage the predictability of it. Even if I don't quite catch it as well, I'll still be able to cover a bit more ground and it'll still have a little bit of run on it. So we're getting to this shot here and, it, and you've got to know your distances as well to be able to do this. You know, there's nothing better than going down to the range and spending you know 100 golf balls with three of your wedges figuring out how far a half swing goes how far you know a, a three quarter and a full swing goes so then you can actually do this so for me i've got 56 out here and everything that i'm going to do now is this golf swing is all about control i want to get this as close as possible i'm not trying to hit it as far as possible i'm trying to get it you know in the hole or at least a tapping distance so my whole motion will look a lot more controlled. So I abbreviate my stance. I make sure I've got that little bit of weight forwards, but I now know if I swing my 56 to roughly chest height, it flies 65 yards. So that then gives me a couple of yards to skip it up and get it near this flag. And that's the prime example there. I've caught that out of the toe, but I'm still up on the green and I've got about 20 foot for my putt. So make sure you're not getting your most lofted wedge out when you get inside this distance, 70, 50, 60 yards, and trying to smash the living hell out of it. Learn to play that more controlled swing with a bit more loft in your hand, a little less loft in your hands, and you'll see you'll get results like that. So this is one thing I think a lot of players forget to do when we're actually getting up to the green, is take stock of what's actually around you. As I'm getting here towards the screen, I'm actually looking around now. I can see my ball over here near the flag, but I'm also starting to think, well, where are the slopes? Where are the undulations? As I'm on this green, I take stock of that. A lot of players just literally walk over to the golf ball, don't give it any attention, and then stand over it and think, oh, right, okay, as I'm over the putt, I wonder which way this is breaking and it's not the way to go about it. If you're just wandering up and as, as I was hitting that shot from back in the fairway, I could see this swale, so it's already in my mind. I'm walking up and I'm thinking, oh, well, at least I know that there's a bit of an upslope here, so I'll probably be putting down the slope. I can see where the high point is over here, and I can see that the ground over here is a lot higher than the water that's over there. So everything's probably gonna fall towards the water side. Another great little tip as well when you're on the putting green, if you come to the hole here and have a look at this for me, see how the hole's really tight cut here, but then round this side of the hole we're starting to get a bit more wear. That's because majority of balls are falling towards that part of the hole. So that shows where the break would be going. So now I know where the land is. I know what the slope's like. I know where the hole's worn out a little bit more. So I've got a good idea that this is gonna be a left to right put down the slope and I can trickle it off and as we see there it's gone near that part of the hole so I didn't quite give it enough but just by being a little bit more attentive as I go through my shots I'm aware of what's going on. So 
so up near the green now and we're literally what 20 yards off the front of the green here if we just have a look what we've actually got to face here as well um it's it's not that difficult really and what i see a lot of players doing is making it difficult for themselves because they're trying to do things that either a they're not comfortable with or you know trying to play a shot that isn't really required now what i would say when you get into this sort of short game area there'll be a a shot that you really like playing you might hate your short game but there's one that you fall back on and you think i can play that and that's fine obviously we want to develop our skill locker and be able to play all of them but if you got into a situation now where i've got two golf balls here flags at the back your your higher caliber player let's say if we watch the pga tour we would see them playing a, a more lofted wedge here to cover all the ground they're going to fly it pretty much all the way now that requires a lot of accuracy and a lot of um, skill in strike now when we do do this if you were to go for this option what we've got to take into account is the journey that this ball is going to go on so as we just look up towards the green there's sort of a swale halfway through it so now with a 60 because i'm going more aerial what i've got to do is make sure that i cover that so with my 60 i would think okay well i've got to fly it 35 40 yards here as well if i stand there thinking well i'm going to get my 60 out and land it on the front there's no chance it's going to run so depending on what option you do take take stock of what's actually around you so for me here now 60 degree i'm going to go and try and land it pretty much up next to the flag so i've committed to this club i know what i've got to do because i've actually taken stock of what's there uh, bounces up little skip and it's just run onto the fringe there but i've managed to get it up over that slope instead of falling short and then thinking well what's gone on there why has that happened let's take a look at the other way that you could play it though just before we play the next shot this is a must anytime you've got your clubs like this you can see in there all the dirt in the grooves that's just after one shot just give your club a little brush with a t like so and you'll hear it sort of squeaking that's when you know you've got clean grooves and you're actually going to be able to get some spin on the golf ball then let's take a look at this next shot so the next option and this one might be the one that you're more comfortable with would be that sort of low flighted bump and run shot so i've gone up to my pitching wedge here and again all i've got to do is just think well what's going to happen on this ball's journey up towards that hole because if i did what i did with the 60 degree there the ball's going to go like 15 yards through the green so i've got to take account and as we look again back up to the green we can see that the slope actually works in a little bit from right and then also on the left side so it's almost like a little bit of a funnel back towards the green also it's running up onto that green so i've got to land this a couple of yards before the green so it misses the upslope and doesn't kill it and then it'll bounce up and trickle on so i'm painting a picture in my mind as i'm playing it whatever shot that i go to when i get a short game shot they're more creative if i stand with a driver i'm just thinking fairway smash it as well here i've got to take account of the swales and the hollows and what does my flight want to be like what does it um do is it's running and the more you can build these pictures up in your mind and you play the shot you're most comfortable with you'll start to actually hit better shots because you've got a good idea of what you want the golf ball to do so i'm going to land this a couple of yards in front and then let it trickle up there we go it's just killed it on that upslope catches that funnel that i talked about and it's gone just up near where my other ball is but it's on the green and I've got that put now. So be creative, think about the shot that you're gonna hit. So not a bad result there from those chips. And the bonus tip I would say to top all this off, as I said earlier, is get practicing. Short game, when you watch the pros, they spend some time on the range, but they're creative out on the short game areas. When they're out on the golf course, they're picking little shots, they throw balls down. If you can play against a friend, and maybe have a chipping comp it's a way to bring that skill level up if you go out onto the golf course and you're faced with a shot like this to that flag you've not practiced it chances are you might know what to do or think you know what to do but you'll stand over it and you'll think oh god please don't duff this don't duff this again as where if you've been out on the golf course on the chipping green spending a bit of time getting used to your short game stuff when you get that shot now you stand over and think ah 
close range, need more loft, need more speed, that's easy. I can do that because you've worked on it. So make sure you're spending some time out on the short game area and get that game in check. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do remember to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in your next lesson very soon.